You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. Boom, we're on, and today's guest, we've got David Weiss. David, boy, how are you? I'm doing great, Ben. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Flat Earth, Globe, is that a cube? You're a man who is basically saying that the Earth is flat. Like You're a true flat earther. Um, you've uncovered a lot of good stuff, but how are you, first of all? I'm doing fantastic. Room's a little echoey, but I hope I stand okay. Yeah, that's okay, mate. Listen, before we get into everything, I always like to go back to the start with my guests, kind of get a bit of information about you, where you grew up, and how it all began. I was born on the East Coast of uh, the United States. I went to college. I got my business degree. I went into corporate America, worked there for years. Um, then uh, while I was in corporate America, I started a podcast called Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, looking into lots of conspiracies. It was kind of a conspiracy mix with comedy. And um, then people started sending me flat earth stuff. And uh, I, uh, at that time, I, I had left corporate America. I started my own business. I was doing really well. And I'm looking into this flat earth thing and I said, oh, it's so stupid. You know, of course we know the earth is uh, um, not flat. I mean, how could it be flat? This is crazy. What about all the other planets? And uh, then I uh, tried to disprove flat earth. I went and said, you know what? I'm going to look. I'm going to prove all you flat earthers to be dum-dums. And I'm just going to get, just be done with it. And that's how you become a flat earther. All right. Once you understand that this is not, flat earth this is what they want you to think flat earth is and that way you'll just disregard it and never look at it this is not flat earth but why uh, the main question probably be why would people want to trick us into believing that the world is flat or round like what's the big attraction about it yeah james that's the that's the best question of all usually i like to save that for the end but we'll we'll hit it because as we go through all the questions, you know, people are like, of course the earth is flat, sunsets, the uh, season, uh, day and night, and all of the things that we've been brainwashed, you know, boats over the horizon. And then when you understand, like, wow, we were really misled on those things, you throw your hands up and you say, why the lie? Why does it matter? Right? And the, the analogy I like to use, is pretty gory. If you walk into a room and there's a massacre, there's dead bodies all over the place, you don't go... Eh, why did they do it? I'm not going to believe it until, until I know why. And the, the answer is, we're going to show you the evidence today. And I have a, I have a couple of reasons why, but um, one of them is it's to control the human race. I mean, if you're, you know, James, you know that your thoughts create your reality. Yes. Your thoughts create the world that you're in. And if they can limit your thoughts, they can put you in the matrix. And the heliocentric system, the globe, is a matrix. It's a matrix for your mind. And it limits your thoughts. It doesn't let you know that, hey, there's more, there's more out there. You know, there, there could be more land beyond Antarctica, right? They want you to, they, they, they take, let me, uh, let me show you this. So this is what flat Earth is, right? It's like a pond and the shoreline of our pond it holds the water in, just like the shoreline of a lake or a pond holds the water in, while our ocean pond is held in by the highest land on Earth. Guess what the highest land on Earth is? Antarctica. They want you to believe that Antarctica is a little island at the bio you know, continent at the bottom of a ball, when in reality, Antarctica is the land that surrounds our world. Now, if I cut right outside this white line, if I cut that out and I wrapped it around a ball in Photoshop, okay, now we're talking, I've limited your world to this ball. There's nothing else to discover. Everything else, everything is in this ball, right? This is not where we live. And I can prove that. I'm going to show you flight routes. I'm going to show you all sorts of things. So the why the lie is literally the best question that you can ask. Um, but the answer is maybe they're hiding more land, right? Maybe they're hiding more land. What if the world was set up like this? We live here. This white ring is Antarctica. 
And out here is more land. What's another way to say more land? Extra land, extra territory, right? If we live, if there's people that live out here and they came to visit us, you might consider them an extraterrestrial from the outer space. So you're talking right? aliens, other people? I'm talking, I'm talking extraterrestrials right here on our world. What if the world is set up like this? All of these extra continents out here, right? All those extra continents. What, what's going on out there, right? This is, um, let me show you something. This is quite interesting. So this was a map that was found in, in, um, in a, a Tibetan temple. And it's uh, supposedly 10 centuries old and it shows all of these other continents out here. An old map, 10 centuries ago. Okay? It's got all these continents out here. I'm trying to get to it one second. And so, this is a, a map of shipping routes. Okay? These are all the ships around the world. You can track them, you can click on a ship, and it shows you. We found some ships that were hundreds of miles inside of the shoreline of Antarctica. That's supposed to be land or frozen you know, for at least frozen ice. How do ships get in there? And so we clicked submarines. on a ship, very little information. What's that? You talking submarines maybe? No, I'm talking cargo ships because we clicked on it. It was four, 580 meters long, 80 meters wide. That is a gigantic ship. And there's very little information on it, but we found out that it was registered um, to the island of Kiribati. Where's Kiribati? Out here in the middle of nowhere is this little sandbar okay called Kiribati the Chinese government just gave them 10 billion dollars okay right so this is Kiribati out in the middle of nowhere that giant ship if it came there it could probably supply them for decades with everything they need because it's such a small little island what's that giant ship doing out there and my answer is I think that it's going to the outer lands I think that it's going from here and it's a shipping lane to these outer lands. What are they trading? Food? Humans? Humans? Who knows what they're trading? Technology? You know, who knows what's coming from out here? But my question is, how would you know? How would you ever know if that's going on? You've never heard of Kiribati? You've never, you'll never, you'll never know what's going on out here. And since we discovered this, those shipping uh, tracking, all of the boats in Antarctica have disappeared. They fixed the glitch. Is there anybody... Interesting, anybody, right? Yeah, of course, man. Like, I don't disagree with you, but how do we know the, those maps are also legit? How do we know everything that we read from the past could be fake Bibles, religions, whatever it is, like, it could all be bullshit. And is it not our perception or how we see the world, what we want to believe, what do we want to think, what we disagree with, what we agree with? Like, how do we know these maps are legit I, and I, not just someone just painted them? Well, there's so many maps. If you look into, you know, the old maps from the, the time where Tataria was listed and Lemuria and all of these other um, places from the past, there's detailed information that is, is amazing. But here's what I say. Anywhere beyond 60 degrees south, which is not even at Antarctica, but it's restricted. No one's allowed to go there. And anything above where we can get to, um, we can get balloons up to 127,000 feet. That's it, um, is speculation. So I'm not claiming that any of this is absolutely true, but there's books about this from the 1800s about land beyond Antarctica. So they're talking about that for you know over a hundred years uh, ago. Um, I want the right to to explore out there. Why are we being restricted from going to Antarctica? The Antarctic Treaty um, prevents anybody from independently um, going to Antarctica. There's like a hundred different companies that. Um, that go to Antarctica, um, but they're all run by one, one company, right? They're all over, overrun by, um, I'm looking for the name of it. It is, um, I forget, it's the Antarctic Commission or something like that. They're all run by the same company. So it's very controlled. You're not allowed to independently explore the outer lands of Antarctica. If you go, you could spend you know, $10,000, $50,000, whatever it is, um, and they take you to a little island called, ready for this? Deception Island, Deception Island. That's where they take you. And now uh, they tell you you're at Antarctica and you don't really get to see anything. Are we talking about the Truman Show here? Are we talking about being 
in like a globe, you, you, like there's maybe doors, pathways, routes to get out and see different worlds, different dimensions, meet different people. Like, what are we talking about, like, with this, if you know what I mean? Like, is it like the Truman Show, kind of everything's a game to keep us secluded from what else could be? You know, there, there's a lot of jobs in this world, a lot of things that don't make any sense. Um, where they're just keeping people busy. They, you know, the way I see this is that they, and we'll get into who they are, are the controllers of this world. This is a more of a spiritual war, and it's it's to harvest our energy. And they they thrive off of our fear energy, and they keep us in this low vibration. This whole world, you know, the physical world, going from pure thought down to physicality, is a very low vibration. And the people or the the beings that are running this world. They know how that works. They they feed off of our fear. So they steer our mind with the news. The news is an acronym for North, East, West, South, steering our mind. They give us the headlines, the worry, the worry in our head by watching the news. They have us believing that we're insignificant specks in the middle of a ever-expanding cosmic universe, right? And 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 that we have no control. That we're you know an asteroid could take us out in any minute. Um, that that um. We're running out of food, we're running out of water, we're running out of space, we're overpopulated. None of that is true. It's all meant to keep us fear in fear and, and powerless, right? This is the Earth at 127,000 feet. It should be spinning a thousand miles an hour below this balloon, but it's not. And when this balloon came down, it landed east of where it took off. East? Yeah, it landed east. And you have to know that the Earth is supposedly spinning to the east. So how did it outrun the spin of the Earth when it's detached from the Earth and the Earth is spinning below, okay? All of our senses tell us that the Earth is flat, level, and stationary. If you knew nothing about this world, had none of the indoctrination that you've had your entire life, and you went outside and used your God-given common senses, you're not spinning. Everything is level. All plumb bobs are parallel, right? On a, on a globe world, there's so much problem with everything they tell us, but you would never, ever believe anyone telling you that the world is um, spinning, whirling, and twirling. Let me just show you what you're supposed to believe, and maybe the, maybe this will help. Um, so, where is it? Uh, they want us to believe that we're spinning, whirling, and twirling in four different directions at once. We're spinning at a thousand miles an hour. That means when you watch the sunset, the sun's not going down. You're falling over backwards faster than the speed of sound on a spinning ball. You're falling over backwards. That's why the sun's appearing to go down, when in reality, it's just going away. We're orbiting the sun at 66,000 miles an hour. That's crazy. You can't even fathom what that speed is, and we're chasing the sun at about a half a million miles per hour. Let me put those into perspective for you. This is the hypersonic sled track. It's going to go by. It's a rocket sled. goes by a Mach 8.6. You can't even see it. Watch, it'll go again. Mach 8.6. You have to believe, right, if you believe in the heliocentric system, that we are orbiting the sun 10 times faster than this, and we're chasing the sun 100 times faster. So we live on a lumpy rock surrounded by spherical adjacent to a vacuum, a void of no pressure, which is scientifically impossible, and we're moving... 10 times the speed and 100 times the speed in two different directions. And the fourth direction, I can't even calculate how many times. But when we go outside, we see stuff like this. What does this tell you? What does your common sense tell you, not your indoctrination? This tells you that this is flat and stationary, right? Get a dinner plate, fill it with water, and try to walk across the room. Try to hold it in a car or going just 100 miles an hour on a perfectly straight road, then have that car speed up or slow down the tiniest bit or take the slightest turn. That water is going to slosh. But we don't see that. We see this. But then they say gravity, right? Gravity, well, we've been, we're all programmed like parrots. Gravity, gravity, right? Gravity is just a theory, okay? They know. They don't even know what gravity is. They came up with a theory of gravity. They put it to the test. They go, well, 96% of it's wrong. Oh, therefore, there must be 96% dark matter and dark energy that no one has ever seen, no one has ever measured, but it has to be there 
or their theory doesn't work. That's not science. That's pseudoscience. And when you have a theory that doesn't work, you throw the theory out. You don't make up nonsense to fill it in. Go ahead. Sorry, I'm ranting a long time. Yeah, no, that's, that's good. This is what I want. What about the moon and the sun then? Like, they look round. So what are they then? How do we know we're not the same as them if they look round from yeah. where we stand? Yeah, great question. Great question. Do you have lights in the ceiling in the room that you're in right now? Yes. What what shape are they? Circle. Okay. Now look at your floor. Are they the same shape as your floor? No. Okay. The lights in the ceiling, the lights in our sky have nothing to do with the shape of the earth. The The whole idea of planets and stars and everything um, uh, being the distances we'll get into, I can prove to you that they're not what they tell you. What are they? I think they're alive. I think they're sentient. I think they're part of this entire living system that we're in. So let me just show you um, about the sun. So, so here is, where am I looking for? Um, I'm going to show you just here, here's a demonstration about why the, how the sun sets and then we'll get, and then I'll show you what the sun looks like. So this line, we're viewing it from a elevated point of view, from a celestial point of view. So this was the sun and it's moving across this line. It's going in a straight level line. You agree this line is level? Yep. It is. Yep. Okay. And so this could be clouds, a cloud deck. It could be mountains. It could be a city skyline. And it never went below this. Now I have a camera on the table, on the counter, on the other end watching it. We're watching the same thing. And if I showed you this first, I would say, is this line level? And you'd be like, no, it's, it's angled down like at 45 degrees. And I'd say, are we going below this thing that appears to be at eye level? But it's not. It's really above eye level. And it just goes beyond it. Now, look at this line. This is a level line. But this is how perspective works. And most people don't understand perspective. Now, let's compare this to a real sunset. So here's my sun just going away across a level line. Here's the sun going away. What's it going behind? This is called the atmospheric deck of opacity. Now, if I zoomed out on that, it would look like it's going below the horizon, but it's not, okay? So that's viewed from a celestial, from a, a terrestrial point of view, okay? So let me show you um, what happens under certain conditions, right? This is on a super cold day, over land, no humidity, and the soup, most clear sky ever. The sun was up here, and it went down, 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 down. Now, if the earth was spinning, it would just keep on going, but it didn't. It went down, 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 and it stopped right here. Now, this is super sped up. It just sat there. Now, my friends are at the beach over here. It's already dark. They already saw the sunset. But this is just the sun going away through the soup of the atmosphere and taking its light with it. Now, you've never seen that because you never had those conditions to see it. You've seen sunsets over the ocean. And you think they're going below the curve, the physical curve of a ball, but we can prove that that's not the case at all. If you're a six foot tall person at the edge of calm water, when you see the sunset, it should set three miles away from you because there's a six foot drop at three miles, according to the globe map, right? But you see it set way farther. So we can see too far, right? If we live on a ball of 24,901 miles around, um, there is a physical curvature at three miles. You shouldn't be able to see the surface of the water anymore because it's below the curve. If you're six feet tall, if you're lower, it's even closer. If you're a foot off the ground. It's only 1.22 miles away, but we can get a camera and zoom on things, 10, 15, 20 miles away and still see them. Right. For example, here is, this is a, a spot in Alusia, France. And from this viewing spot, Mount Tanagu is out here, 175 miles away. Well, according to the globe map, using the globe curve calculator, the top of that mountain should be um, over a half a mile below the curve, right? Well, we don't see it. Interesting, okay? The light from the mountain isn't bright enough to push through 175 miles of atmosphere. Just like if you're in a big pool, you can't see the far side of the pool just because the water becomes opaque. Air does the same thing over a greater distance. But twice a year, the sun migrates in between the two tropics. I'll show you that in a moment. When it lines up with that viewing spot, the sun's light is powerful enough to push that far, and it backlights the mountain. And here is the entire mountain, okay? 
The top of this mountain should be a half a mile below a physical curve, but it's not. It's right there. Okay. This is just one of many. You know, and the other one they indoctrinate us with is they say boats over the horizon. We've seen boats disappear from the bottom up. Yes. If the earth was a globe, boats would disappear from the bottom up. But there's another reason they disappear from the bottom up. Out here, you don't see anything, but as we zoom in, we're zooming in and we're increasing the angular size. And as we increase the angular size, look, we can resolve that there is a boat there. Our eyes can only see a certain size. And as we zoom out, these little waves in the foreground are bigger than the boat and they're gonna block the boat, okay? Just like my fingers block in the boat, right? right? And the boat disappears. Now, it's not going over the curve, although a globe we're sending on a beach boats over the curve. But it's right there. I zoomed in. I just proved it's not. My finger can't hide my face unless I went like that. And then it could hide my face. So a tiny wave, whoops, went on here. A tiny wave can hide an entire city skyline. All right? So people, the argument is, well, that boat, we don't know how far it is. Well, we know how far this is. This is an oil rig. It doesn't move. 9.4 miles away. The camera is one foot off the ground. The waters should disappear behind the horizon at 1.2 miles away. Let's round up, say two miles. Give the globe a little advantage. Not only can we see this entire thing, we can see the surface of the water for miles beyond it. Okay? We, we have some video of, um, of a boat um, uh, that we know how far it is, and um, we see another boat miles beyond it so higher on the horizon and and we it, it's way beyond this boat and we said okay what if that other boat was only one mile behind it so it was to be 17 miles away i think is the number and we did the the curve calculator the radius of the earth would need to be i think 380,000 miles 380,000 miles when they tell us the radius of the earth is like 39,000 miles, just under 4,000 4, miles. The, it would have to be a, the, wor the world would have to be a hundred times bigger than they tell us to see that boat. And then with infrared photography and stuff, we can see things way farther, way farther than that. So again, it's only when you look and understand um, what you're seeing that, uh, that you'll understand. People see stuff like this. Now, this is super zoomed in. You zoom out, and this entire building disappears. You can't even see it. But when we zoom in, we're like, hey, the bottom of the building is missing. What's going on here? A couple things. The little waves in the foreground are blocking the building. But if you look, these terraces are compressed. You're getting, as you're looking lower and lower in the atmosphere, it's compressing. This little terrace here is the same as this. So you're having compression. You're having obfuscation by the waves. And that's why you can't see this, right? So there, there's, there's many, many, many photos like that. Many photos like that. Here, here's one, let me just show you one more. This is Mount Jacinto. I, I always pronounce that wrong. Someone corrected me the other day, but we'll just call it Mount San Jacinto. 123 miles away. We should only be able to see the very, very, very tip. See the whole thing. But guess what? This is with infrared. Without infrared, Sky is blue. Can't see, right? And that would be like, oh, that's because it's over the curve. But then we break out infrared. What is infrared doing? Diving over the curve? I don't think so. It's going straight. We can see too far. That proves the earth is flat. We're not spinning. You can't have high pressure next to low pressure without a spin. Well, here, let me ask you a question. I've been talking on top. Yeah, um, but, uh, you understand air pressure, right? You have yep. a balloon and you pop it, the air just, you know, the air, the air wants to equalize. If you had a, a, uh, a bottle and that had no air in it and you open it, it's going to suck the air in upside down, open it. It's going to suck all the air right up. Right. You know that. Yes. Yeah. So how does air stick to the earth adjacent to the greatest vacuum that we can't even recreate here? Now, NASA, we'll get into them, has a, um, has a vacuum chamber that uh, the walls are eight, eight or 11 feet thick, cement and steel. Um, so when they suck the air out of it, it doesn't implode. Like eight feet thick or 11 feet thick, whatever it is. Crazy. 
right? And they can't even make a full vacuum, but we have the vacuum of space adjacent to to air pressure. It makes no sense. Yeah. It's scientifically impossible. So, David, right? what if everybody was to believe everything you said? Say 8 billion people tomorrow believed the earth was flat. Then what? Great question. Great question. So, you know, they have us all believing that, you know, that we live on the spinning ball, we're insignificant, we're powerless, and therefore they can rule over us because everyone's scared. They think that we need government, right? If everybody watched your podcast tomorrow and woke up the next day and goes, wow, the globe lie is real, all governments would crash, would, would cease to exist. All universities would close. Many religious institutions would close. Okay. And everything would have to be remodeled, but it would be a new world, the world where people know that they're at the center of creation. I don't know what your, um, your beliefs are. I don't want to say the word religious because I'm not religious at all. I'm not Matter religious fact, I was either. A, yeah. I'm not either. Right. And I didn't believe, I believed in the big bang. Once upon a time, there was nothing. It exploded and created everything. That's cool. And then lightning struck and created a, an amoeba, a cell. That's impossible. And that turned into a frog that turned into a fish. That fish climbed out of the water, grew legs, found another sexy fish, had, and had a monkey baby, and the monkey baby had a human. Okay, I'm speeding it up a little bit. All, right? All of that is insanity. That, none of that makes any sense. But you have to believe that if you believe in the heliocentric model. So why, what difference does it make if, um, if we... Uh, if we woke up to that, we take back our power. You know, we have what's called natural law, right? And then here's the natural law. These are the only laws that matter. Don't hurt anybody. Don't, don't kill anybody and, and help the person next to you. That's basically it. I mean, just be good and don't interfere with anyone else's life. Don't, you know, injure other people. And the, you know, they, the government wants us to think that they rule over us. They give us our rights. None of that's true. They take our rights away, and the only way they do that is if you agree. The only control anyone has over you is in your imagination because you have been given free will, right? We are free people, but we have let these psychopaths run the world and keep our mind, um, you know, in prison. You know, who, who are these people? Well, this is the lower levels, right? These are the levels that we know, the, 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 the Club of Rome, the Bilderberg Group, the, you know, United Nations, these are the people that we know, but there's people above them that we don't even know. You know, they're the, and, and where are these people? I think they're in the lands, you know, either in our deep in our southern oceans or even beyond the shoreline of Antarctica. Do you Crazy. think these people are human? That's a great question. You know, uh, I think that that people come from um, different places and, and we're all human, if you will. Let me just show you on my app here. Um, this is this is something I'd like to toy with. And by the way, and uh, say it one more time, anything beyond the shoreline of Antarctica is speculation. But I'm speculating. People love believing in planets and extraterrestrials coming from these ridiculous places. And I'm saying space is scientifically impossible. Um, and this is scientifically possible. What if what if the world was set up like this? We live here. We live here in this pond. Okay, this is our pond, our local sun and our moon circle around and we have our star field, right? And so we'll get into stars in a second, like I said, but these are other pieces of the plane, other ponds on the plane. What do you call a piece of a plane? A planet, okay? And these are just thousands of miles away, just thousands, right? The closest star, right? The closest star, think about this. The closest star um, in the heliocentric model is four and a half light years away, James. Four and a half light years. That's 25 trillion miles. Hey, cosmologically, that doesn't sound so far. So let me ask you a question. But on your thinking cap, this is really easy. If you were traveling at one mile per second and you traveled for one trillion seconds, you've gone one trillion miles, right? Mile per second, one trillion seconds, you've gone a trillion miles. So if you wanted to go to the, the closest star, you're traveling at a mile per second, which is very fast. No one's ever gone that fast. And you traveled for a trillion seconds. You're one twenty fifth of the way to the closest star. One twenty fifth, and the other stars are magnitudes farther. To so get if you're to traveling, the star. 
Yeah, the closest star, 31,000 years, okay? 31,000 years, and you're only 1 25th of the way there. And then you think that we can see that? You think that we can see that star, right? This is what stars look like. This is a star. This is what stars really look like. Our consumer optics have outgrown their lives. These things are here within the Earth system, okay? Right? Here's Venus. This is what Venus really looks like. Venus is not a rock the same size as Earth orbiting around the sun. Venus is a very special, what they used to call wandering star, right? Remember the, the, the I showed you before, they were whirling and twirling and spinning, traveling four and a half billion miles a year, never to return to where we were before. So you know what parallax is when you're driving down the road, you know, and you move over, things, things will change their position, far things and close things. That's called parallax. And there's no parallax in the stars ever. Four and a half billion years, we look up, go out tonight, take a picture of the stars, put a note in your calendar to do the same thing same night next year. Every star will be in the exact same place. What do you How think the stars possible? are? What do you think the stars are then? Yeah, I, uh, you know, I, again, this is just me speculating because the only thing that we could actually say about stars are that they're lights in the sky. This is the star Sirius. I used to laugh at people that believed in astrology because I astronomy, that's the real science. But in reality, astronomy is just a much a bunch of made up pseudoscience nonsense. Okay. They're looking at stars like, oh, this star is uh, uh, 400 light years away. Okay. 400 light years. But I can see with my eye. What is this? Right. Is it angelic? I don't know. I don't know. And because I don't know doesn't mean that, it, that, you know, I don't need to know everything. I don't know where the catalytic converter in my car is. I thought it was in the engine. Somebody told me it's in the muffler. I don't know, but my car still works. Okay. So again, I think they're part of this living system that we're in. Right. And when you look at these, all these stars, they, they do wild things. Every star is, has its own, um, has its own personality, if you will. They do their own things. These are a whole bunch of different stars. Some are out of focus. Some are more in focus. But what is going on here? This is the most interesting question of all. What are they? Let's try to figure that out together. But they're not light. They're not stars. Um, they're not. They're not giant suns. And let me let me prove that. Let me prove that. So. So here is. Um, where is it? Close sun. So they tell us our sun is um, it's like a big yoga ball and we're a BB next to it, a small marble. So if at noon I had the sun over your head and it was just a mile over your head, it would fill the entire sky like this. You'd look up and that's all you'd see is the entire sun, right? That is so gigantic that it's only a mile over your head. Now let's move it 93 million miles away and it reduces to the size of a coin held at arm's length. You with me? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it got smaller because it got smaller due to perspective right so it reduced from the entire sky horizon to horizon when it was a mile over your head bringing it out to 93 million miles it's now the size of a coin what if i doubled that distance how much smaller would it get and the answer is it would be a quarter of the size okay see, I, it, see, it, yeah, it would be a quarter. See, if we, see if we're in dubai see if i'm in dubai and it's 40 degrees it's roasting you're on the beach, it's warm, but yet the, they say the further I travel up, the colder I will become. Shouldn't it be warmer going closer to the sun? Or but why is that different? Is that gravity? Or what? You say yeah. gravity doesn't exist, that, but that means, so what's the yeah. difference? The higher you yeah, go, they say you can't breathe, they say you get colder. Is that a myth, do you think, to stop no, no, us that, from traveling that's up? No, that's actually true. It's, it's, it's colder up there. Let me, just, let, let me just finish on the distance of the sun. So they tell us that the sun is 400 times bigger than the moon and 400 times farther. And that's why they look like they're the same size, or perhaps they're just the same size. Okay. But they tell us it's 400 times bigger, 400 times farther. Therefore, they look like they're the same size. All right. So they tell us Polaris, our North Star, is, is 48 times bigger than our sun. So think about this. Our sun, 93 million miles away, it's really tiny. If I made it eight times farther, you could not see it. Its angular sides would be small, like that boat, too small, and you couldn't see it. It would be tiny, 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 tiny. 
and you, you couldn't see it. And the brightness issue, that's another whole problem. So at, at eight times farther, that's a light hour because they tell us our sun is eight light minutes away. Eight times eight, 64, we'll call it a light hour. At a light hour, you could not see the sun, right? So if we made Polaris 48 times farther than that, then it would be the same size because it's 48 times bigger. That is a light two days. That's, that's like two light days, rounded up to a light week, right? At a light week, you could not see Polaris when they're telling us we can see it 433 light years away. Here's the problem. Half of the people listening to this right now have short-circuited already. They're like, my mind doesn't work like that. This is simple math, but they didn't teach you this in school. They didn't teach you to think this way. They taught you to memorize and regurgitate, right? Oh, it's this big, and therefore I have to believe it, but never, ever tried to prove it. So, so let's talk about Dubai and the sun, right? So let's say you and I, where are you, where are you located, James? Yeah, Scotland. It's, it's cold there right now, right? Freezing. Yeah, always. Is the ground frozen? Yeah, always. Oh, okay. So you and I are, uh, I come to Scotland and we're going to have a couple of beers and we decide we're going to sit outside in the middle of a soccer field and we're 20 feet apart from each other and our beers are frozen. We can't even drink our beers. Then somebody comes over and holds 15 feet over your head on a big post, a big giant heat lamp, right? You take off your coat, your beer melts, the ice around you melts, and you have that summer sun directly over your head. And I say, point to the sun and you go, it's up here, but I'm 20 feet over there. So when I look at your sun, I go, it's not up there. It's lower in my sky. It's over there. And I can barely feel the heat. I'm freezing. You're boiling. Okay. Now that person slowly walks over to me. They slowly walk over to me. They slowly walk over to me. You're going to watch that sun get lower and lower and lower. And I'm going to watch the sun get higher and higher and higher as I get warmer and warmer. Watch right here on the app. Make it a little bigger so you can see it. Okay. So here's the sun and it's right here. This outer yellow line is the Tropic of Capricorn and the inner yellow line is the Tropic of Cancer. Okay. You with me? And the sun migrates in between those two tropics six months out, six months in. So let's move it to June. So in June, the sun is all the way in, closer to Scotland, closer to Connecticut where I live. It's our summer because the sun is higher in the sky. It's not higher, it's closer. And it's winter in Australia. It's winter in Santiago. Six months later, the sun migrates all the way out to the Tropic of Capricorn in South America as their summer. And we have our winter because the sun is farther away. It's lower in the sky. You know that in the heliocentric model, they tell us that during our winter, the sun is three and a half million miles closer to Earth. During our northern winter, the sun is three and a half million miles closer. And it's just that angle that's making us cold, right? That's ridiculous because in the summer, in June, on the warmest day in June, the sun is three and a half million miles away. When it shows up on the horizon, when it's coming towards you, you could feel the heat immediately. Well, it should be arctically freezing if the whole tilted thing was real. It's the distance it is from you. That's it. That's how seasons work. In the app, by the way, it's called the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. If you Google Flat Earth, you're going to find nonsense. You're going to find nothing. Okay? Right? So in the app, um, the, there's a question mark button. And whoops. Hold on. In the app, if you hit the question mark button. Oh, I'm having a, this is the test version of the app here. Well, I'll just show you. If you hit the if you hit the the question mark button, up comes all the frequently asked questions that you're having. Okay, what what's going on there? Um, it'll show you you know why the lie, where does the sun go, boats over the horizon, what about eclipses, what about the International Space Station, you know all of this stuff, um, and it'll it'll answer all of those questions to you. And I have a challenge every day on the app. There's a new featured video right here. And I say. If you think the Earth is a globe, watch the featured video every day. Just click that thumbnail. Watch it every day for two weeks, right? If you want to hit the archive button, you can watch the last two weeks. Feel free. 
And if you can come up with one globe proof, I'll give you three Bitcoins. Three Bitcoins for one proof of the globe. But I have to warn you, if you try to do it, you're going to end up a flat earther like I am. What do you think? Why do you think humans are here? And who and why? Who do you think created us then? Where do you think we've came from? First of all, David. Yeah, that's a great question. And uh, the way I look at it is I think we are all pieces of the creator. I think we're all, this is a co-creation and we're all pieces of whoever, whatever this source is. And we're here to experience the world and, in, and it expand the mind of the creator. We're here to experience love, right? You know how they say, um, you know, dogs uh, show us what unconditional love is, right? And dog backwards is God. I find that interesting, right? So, and you know, dogs are our pet, wonderful. Um, we're here to expand our consciousness. I believe that, you know, consci pure consciousness is non-physical. It spirals down to the lowest point where we become physical and we are in this low point of physicality. And then it's, then when that passes, we spiral back up to the zero point again and the whole thing starts again. I think we are infinite souls having um, an experience here in what I call the training grounds of Earth, of, uh, of Earth. Could we be avatars? Could we be avatars? You know, that, so the, the idea of an avatar, I, I did. My answer is yes, because, but it's not that way. It's when our body dies, our soul continues on. Therefore, by definition, we're avatars. This is our meat suit. Yeah. What about the moon landings? Like, why would they fake moon landings in the sixties? Like, what is the purpose of it again? Like, even though I understand what you're saying, but why, why lie about it all? Like, what is the the sole purpose of people lying, whether they go to the moon or not? Is it so we can't travel or try and make ways to try and get out, or what's their purpose of lying about moon landings? Well, so in uh, nineteen fifty nine ish or in the late nineteen fifties. Um, they started exploring, you know, the people that are running the world now, and these are just the puppets of the real masters. Um, they started exploring Antarctica, and uh, you know, Admiral Byrd supposedly went out there and said, "Hey, there's land bigger than the United States, filled with unlimited resources that no human has ever set eyes upon." And uh, um, then all of a sudden, they're like, "Oh, nobody can go to Antarctica." All the countries in the world signed the treaty and said, nobody can go to Antarctica on, you know, no independent exploration of Antarctica. And hey, we're going to the moon. We're going to send a bunch of Freemasons to the moon. You can never verify anything. But, you know, I used to believe in the moon landing until I actually look, right? When you look at the moon on a full, on a night, on a, you know, full moon night, you can read by it. You can drive your car with the lights off. It lights up. It casts your shadow on the ground. That's moonlight, right? Why isn't this rock which I argue is maybe more reflective than the moon. Why isn't that shining light back at the camera? Is this noon? This is 12 noon here. Um, this rock, how come it's not lit up like the moon, right? And when you look at the moon landing, it's it absolutely, um, when, when you look at it, I, I don't know how, how um, I don't know how anybody could possibly believe it. There, there's so many um, issues like here, you know, we, we have to believe this is what was originally shown when R Russia landed a rover on the moon. Okay, look at this. Does this hold up? Right. This is what we were shown. Russia landing a rover on the moon and the U.S. is no better. Okay. Um, let me show you some a couple other things. Um, so here's uh, the Apollo landing. This is the, he's. He's on the orbiter by himself. The other two guys are on the moon. And who is panning that camera up? Okay. Who panned that camera up? He's on the orbiter alone. I mean, it's just little things like that. But you look more, um, you know, you look, you look at this stuff. Um, no, the, 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 there's so much evidence that there was recently a whistleblower in the app. Um, under the frequently asked questions, you hit moon landing. And there's a whole bunch of videos. And one of them is the son of an ad of an ad an admiral, I think it was admiral, um, who on his deathbed whistle blew where and how they filmed the 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 moon landings. Right? So again, 
It's only when you look into it, right? We have to believe that this thing from the 1960s can protect somebody from 250 degrees below zero to 250 degrees above zero. I challenge any astronaut, any person to get in this thing and put them in the Sahara Desert for an hour and see if they lived. Okay, and that's nothing. Now, what's that? 120 degrees if they're lucky. Um, this is handles a 500 degree swing in temperature. Right? This is ridiculous. This is just nonsense. And there's you you zoom in on the uh, on the the, the um, on their their stuff. It, it's absolutely ridiculous. How could they do any work outside the space station uh, in this? Right? Or the on the moon landing? Right? And then these these are the Artemis people. Look, Look at these boots. Th these are just costumes, right? And when you when you really look at this stuff, um, you know, like the flag on the moon waved, and it, and it was wet on one of the, on one of them. And then when the when the Lem launched, who filmed this? And how did they get that film back to Earth? Okay, this thing goes up, right? It's gonna go up. I hope there it goes up. Pan back, zoom up. What did they leave the cameraman there and he have a separate rocket? They didn't have digital. This was all done on film. And by the way, those cameras could never even work on the moon. Again, um, on the on the app under the moon landing stuff, right? You would uh you could you'll find all of these videos. Now this is the the moon landing and they're coming back, amazing. Well, what they did here is they literally just kicked that capsule out of an airplane, right? This is this is all they did above where anybody can see and that and they said oh it's, they're coming back from the moon and nobody's in there nobody's in there this is all nonsense this is all deceiving so why why the lie it's to keep you believing you live on a ball to keep you believing that government is your god keep you believing uh that you have no power keep you uh from reaching your full potential these evil bastards lack of a better word uh, that are running this world, they don't want you reaching your full potential. You know, the Rockefellers, you know, again, these are the people that we know. Um, I think it was Rockefeller that said, we don't, I don't want a, um, a class of thinkers. I want a class of workers. So they, they send you to college. College literally fills your head with nonsense. They teach you algebra and uh, basic geometry and calculus. And they teach you to become an accountant. They teach you to work in their uh, fiat money system be a slave for them they don't teach you about uh sacred geometry about vortex mathematics they don't teach you about the stuff that could challenge their authority right that's uh you know the the there's so much i mean we could spend hours hours right this is uh you know oh what about this photo of earth right this is from nasa's website we pulled it off of their website we put it into photoshop we cranked it up and what do we see we see a box around the moon this is a simple cut and paste they didn't expect us to have photoshop and be able to do this since we did that they've changed it they cleaned up the edges and they put it back on right there's so much so much that we See, can when they take go photos, into there what, what i've always questioned when they take videos or photos outside of earth they never turn around 360 it's always ne pointing never down. once why is that never. wait let me ask you a question when you're on an airplane and you're coming into your home airport, you ever look down and see your house? Yeah. What do you say to the stranger next to you? That's my hey, house. Hey, that's my house. Yeah. Kind of excited, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you go to the moon, right? We look up at the moon. The moon's pretty big. Go up to the moon. The earth is six times bigger. And that's where you live. Never once did they point the camera up, take a picture of the moon. Never once in all the dialogue did they go, wow, look at the earth. Never once did they say the word earth. Never once. That's impossible. Never once did they do a 360. Right? And on the moon landing one, there's a guy that uh, is a professor, um, a very experienced with the Hasselblad cameras that they use and proved that there's no possible way they could have used them. No possible way. Here's the question. How come they don't blow up from being in a vacuum? Right? If you're in a suit, and you're underwater, it crushes you. And if you go up, it expands. How come they don't blow up like Stretch Armstrong? Okay. This is the nonsense. They're wearing snowboarding suits, right? 
absolute nonsense. And how come they don't see the stars, right? They see nothing. They see nothing like that, right? Like, oh, the aperture, right? You know, we took a camera, we were looked up at a street light, and right off to the side of the street light was a star, and with our scrappy iPhone 4, we could film that star. But NASA can't film stars from outer space, right? And when you say, what are the stars? We had a, um, a we, we need to do it again because uh, during the YouTube uh, apocalypse of deletion, we lost the video, but we sent a balloon up at nighttime with the cameras looking up. And before it even left, you could see an amazing star field. So as you get up higher and higher, it should get brighter and brighter and brighter. But when it hit 60, 70, 80,000 feet, all the stars were gone. They're all gone. What is that about? Could we be in a simulator? Could we be in a simulation? Yeah. Are you talking about, so here's the thing. What is a simulation? You know, if we are consciousness having a physical experience in this meat suit, this is some sort of simulation. But when I say simulation, it's not like it's just a computer simulation. This is a magical place. Our thoughts create our reality. When you're in tune and you think of something, it happens very fast now. It happens very fast. So what is that? You know, that is not the physical world that they taught us. We live on this dielectric plane, okay? And way beyond what we're able to understand, right? Our thoughts create our reality. Let, um, let's go back to uh, the, a couple of things, you know, that will help you get off the globe. And one of them is, um, is Southern flights. So in, so we have our globe, picture our globe. Top half is the north. Bottom half is the south. You got the equator right in the middle. You with me? Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. So if you're going from any northern location, Scotland to, to New York or, or New York to California or California to Germany or any combination from a northern airport to any northern airport, none of those planes will ever cross the equator because that's silly. You want to go the shortest route, right? Why would you go into the Southern Hemisphere to come back up to the Northern Hemisphere when you could just go across? And guess what? No flight routes um, ever, ever do that, right? So in the South, the same thing should be true. You want to go from Santiago to Australia, you just go across the bottom, right? Go around Antarctica, go over Antarctica, right? That's the shortest route, but that's not where, where they go, right? So here's a, a flight route. We're going from um, Abu Dhabi to Auckland, and it goes all the way over here and then all the way back down. Why didn't it just cut across over here? But when you look at it on a flat earth map, it's on a straight line, right? I'm gonna show you a couple more of these, and then I'm gonna uh, you know, answer an objection that you're gonna have. Buenos Aires to Qatar. They, they actually, it was the other way around. This was the World Cup. They were going from Qatar um, to Buenos Aires, but they went to Rome first for, to fuel. Why did they go there when they could have just gone here? And the answer is because they went from Qatar to Rome to Buenos Aires, right? That makes sense on a flat earth. It makes no sense on a globe earth, right? If you want to go from Auckland to Cape Town, Cape Town, South Africa, to Auckland, New Zealand, this would be the shortest route. But they go all the way to... Abu Dhabi, I mean, to Dubai, and they go all the way through the north and all the way across. It's kind of a pretty straight line, right? Let me show you a couple more. And then they, the, the question that people say, well, it's because it's because um, that's, they have to go to hubs and pick up other people. I'm going to prove that's not true. All right. This one is going from California to where's that the uk london yeah london but it goes this is the route that they show you on the globe but in reality this is a straight line on a flat earth map and it touches all of the same land points here's greenland right greenland right there it's a straight line every time we look at a flight route that does all these crazy things it makes perfect sense on a flat earth okay makes perfect sense but Let's let's address the um, the issue with going to hubs. So, lots of times 
there's an emergency. Someone's having a baby. Someone's having a heart attack. You need to land the plane. Bam. So here's a, a flight from Hawaii to New York. About here, there was an emergency. They went all the way up to Seattle, over a thousand miles out of the way. And somehow they got there in 15 minutes. How is that possible? This is where they showed them they were going. But on a flat earth map, look what's right on that flight path, right? Same thing. It's right on that flight path. That, is that a coincidence? There's another one. They went here. They went all the way up to Moscow. Moscow's right on the flight path, right? Makes no sense on a globe. Makes perfect sense. Here's one. Dallas to Beijing. Went all the way up to Calgary. I think it's like 1,500 miles. They got there super fast, okay? Um, Calgary, right on that flight path, right? And let me show you another one. This is uh, this is the important one. Or here's first this one. Um, this is a flight from New York to Auckland, New Zealand. Right here, they had an emergency. They went to Fiji. Why didn't they just continue straight? And the answer is because on a flat Earth, Fiji's right there. Zoom in. Fiji's right there on their path. It's not over where the globe shows you. The globe is not accurate for navigation. This, the flat Earth map is what they use for um, navigation in you know airplanes and everything. Use it for navigation. So here's the, here's the last one I'm going to show you. Uh, families tra traveling together from Hong Kong. Excuse me. They're trying to get to the UK. 12 hour flight, four hours into the flight, the mother dies. Okay, dead in her seat. Little kids, husband, right? And dead mother in a seat. What do you do? Well, well, you gotta land the plane. They didn't land it for eight hours. And they finally landed in Germany. Right? Why don't they just finish the trip? Eight hours, right? They could have landed in dozens of airports all along the way. The problem was, that's not where they were. On a flat earth map, Mother dies here. They're over Russia. They're over Russia. Well, two problems. If you land in Russia, Russia might be the good guys and help you out. We can't have Russia being the good guys. Two, what are we doing flying over Russia? Pilots say they fly over Russia all the time. And most of them don't even know it because they don't know where they are. They just take off and land. GPS flies the plane. And so they couldn't land until they got to Germany. Well, eight hours. Those kids are already damaged for the rest of their lives. Might as well have gotten them to their final destination so they could bring their mother home to rest. But they didn't. They landed here, and it's right on the line. And they're over Russia. So, again, emergency landings prove the Earth is flat. And, it, and the other thing is, if you don't believe me, you know, don't, I, I, that's the other thing. Don't believe me, right? Don't believe me. you got to go verify this stuff yourself. This is a free PDF online, or you can order it on Lulu.com, the actual book. It documents everything. 16 emergency landings proving the earth is flat. Highly recommend it if you want to look into this. If you don't, you know, live your life. It's all as all well. Could it have been maybe hundreds of years ago when people thought the earth was actually round and they've just kind of stuck with it because they never had the, the resources or the re, they never researched it properly or had the technology that we have now? They've just made a mistake, but because it's went... And everybody's eventually just believed it because it's been getting pushed out for so long that it could have actually just been a mistake. So the the question is, you said, you know, when everyone believed the Earth was a globe, nobody yeah. believed the Earth was a globe. It's a recent story, okay? In the nineteen and mid-1900s, they were teaching flat Earth in American schools. I did an interview with a 102-year-old woman in February 2020 and uh, she said that they were, she was taught in, in a public school in Connecticut that uh, the earth was flat. And then years later, they changed it uh, to, to a globe. They were teaching flat earth and globe earth all the way up into the late 1950s and early 60s. And they only changed it. And they literally lied about, oh, we've known it for thousands of years. The Greeks figured it out. You know, um, it, it's, it's absolutely not true. Right? The, the Greeks figured out this is Ruth, the woman I interviewed. If you check out my channel, D-I-T-R-H, and look for uh, the interview with Ruth, it's quite amazing. Uh, it'll bring tears to your eyes. She was so thrilled. Uh, she's like, I always knew it. Um, but if you look back into all, all the ancient cultures, every single one of them thought the Earth was flat, except this religion right here, NASA. Okay, NASA has no photographs of Earth. Right, The photographs of all the other planets that we can't verify, but they have no photographs of Earth. 
Nah. So who was is it Werner von Werner von Braun or Werner von Braun? That yeah. he was uh, high up in with NASA, was he not? But in with the Nazis and all that. Friends with Walt Disney. So Werner von Braun was a yeah, he was a Nazi scientist, um, you know, rocket scientist and and Project Paperclip. This is the story uh that they brought over the best um, you know scientists here and they put him in charge of all of our major industries Lockheed Brumman NASA you know Werner von Braun the Nazi is running NASA okay well you know what we we, we want to win the space race there was no space race it's all a lie the Cold War is all a lie all of these countries are in it together it's all working together it's amazing you know oh my god there's you know we're always fighting over resources fuel and space and everything and also, they and you know, in the 19, 1959, they go. There's unlimited resources in Antarctica, and no people to displace, no animals, no trees, just resources: coal, oil, uranium, right? Everything we need. And they go, oh, nobody can go there. Antarctic Treaty, Antarctic Treaty, don't go there. And if you don't believe me, one of our lawyer flat earthers uh, did some extensive research on the Antarctic Treaty. Um, on the on the frequently asked question page of the app, if you click the Antarctica button and then watch the um, sorry Antarctica is closed video, you will um, have a ton of research done for you showing you that you can't go to Antarctica and and explore. They won't let you. So what about UFOs, David? Like, what's your opinion on UFOs? So yeah, so uh, what is a UFO? an unidentified flying object, right? So let me ask you a question. Where, the, so we talked about the, the, the farthest star, I mean the closest star, 25 trillion miles away with a space and a scientifically impossible vacuum in between. So if we're lucky enough to have a UFO coming from the closest star, right? Which is magnitudes closer than any others. And they come here through 25 trillion miles and then they crash in Roswell, they, you know, they come here. All of that is nonsense. Space travel is nonsense because space doesn't exist. But if they're coming from the outer land, they're right here. They're here already. Okay. And you asked earlier if, uh, you know, extraterrestrials, I think that all the different races of people came from different lands outside of where we are. And they put them all here in this mixing pot, um, which is basically a school. I look at the earth, the earth, the, the known world, the known earth as a school, right? So the extraterrestrials are coming from the extra land. They're right here. I mean, the words say it themselves. The extraterrestrials are coming from the outer lands, right? What if we live right here, right? And and they're coming from out here. They literally could come here and make it home in time for dinner with the kids on the same day, okay? It's close. And they're using advanced propulsion, electromagnetic propulsion. You know, burning gas to fly an airplane is ridiculous. We have free energy. It's everywhere. You just hang a wire from a high in the sky and it gets a charge. Okay. There's free energy everywhere. And, you know, in the app, if you go to the web button, which is not working for me right now because I'm plugged in here, um, there's a button called Zataria and the mud floods. I don't know if you've heard about that, but look into that. Make sure you bring food and water when you click that button. And, um, it will it'll blow your mind. What about the harp effect? The thing they say they control the weather. The harp effect they say they can control the weather with hurricanes, tornadoes. Have you ever heard of it? I had David Icon and he was talking about it, how people can control the weather. You know, they admit it. They say um they want to control the weather. Years and decades ago they said we want to control the weather by twenty twenty five. They're ahead of the schedule. You know, you got all of these uh next rad radar stations which are really up, heating up the ionosphere, heating up the dome, if you will, and they're moving storms around. There is no natural weather anymore. Um, and when you look into that, you know, it's it's undeniable. But, you know, a lot of the stuff that they're doing in the sky is beyond of what we can imagine. You know, the spraying, do you guys have heavy spraying of your skies there? Not so much, no, not in Scotland. It's, cr it's crazy here in America. Um, but, you know, to me, I think that there literally there's some sort of war going on between the non-physical realm above us and here. Like we are connected. Our pineal 
um, glands are connected to source energy, right? You know, all the particles, every particle, this is hard to fathom, but every particle has all of the information of every other particle um, in the whole world. So this, uh, this whole world is a fractal beyond what we can even imagine. What do you think of cli climate change? I think it's complete and total garbage and nonsense. You know, one burp of a volcano uh, will put more carbon in the air than all of the people uh, do. It and, and again, you know, global climate change, how do you have air adjacent to a vacuum? Scientifically impossible and changing. Now, should we not pollute? Absolutely. Should we, you know, watch any of Watch how much pollution we put out there. Absolutely. But this earth is a living system. It regenerates itself, right? And the, the amount of spraying they're doing in the sky outweighs everything um, that humans could possibly be doing. What about the oceans? They say we've only covered 5% of the oceans. Do you think there's other cities possibly in, like the Pacific Ocean and other oceans that we've not really searched? Oh, ab absolutely. The... Um, you know, they, they tell us that there's um, four oceans, right? You got the Atlantic, the Pacific, the Indian, and uh, the Arctic, but they never told us about the Southern Ocean. That Southern Ocean is everything outside of 60 degrees south, which is bigger than all of the other oceans combined, but no one's allowed to go there, and they don't teach us about it in school, okay? That's crazy, right? So what's going on below the ocean? I don't know. I think Personally, I think that there's levels, there's more dense levels below us and non-physical levels above us. We're here in this toroidal field on the, on the plane, on this uh, plane, uh, inertial plane, and, um, and that's where we exist. I don't think we can exist outside of this place, right? Um, we, we, can, we, can we go back to gravity just for a minute? Yeah, of course. Right? So they, so they want us to think that this is crazy. This is down. This is what we think is down. Okay. Right. This is what they want you to think down is. Down is every direction towards the center. Right. That's insane. This makes sense. Right. So what is gravity? Well, positive and negatives attract each other. The earth does not move. The earth has a negative or neutral charge for perfectly provable. And um, the... So when you're on the earth, you're connected to this negative charge. When you lift anything above the ground, a microphone, a hammer, a person, whatever, it's surrounded in this positive field because the earth isn't moving. It says, hey, down is it this way. That electrostatic charge is, um, what not? Um, is what says, hey, down is this way. And then buoyancy and density sort everything else out, right? So let me show you a, a couple things just to prove this is... Um, this is the case. So here is a bunch of balloons, helium balloons, tied them to this. There's a button right here. It's just a metal button. And we have a, a wire going to a Van der Graaff generator that can put a charge into it. So this is floating neutrally. It's just balanced. We're going to add a positive charge. And as soon as we do, just adding a charge to it, it goes down. And then when we discharge it, we let it go back to its natural state. It goes right back up. Now, do we make it heavier or do we change the electrostatic charge and make it make it more attractive to Earth? The funny thing is all of the periodic table, the higher the positive charge, the more dense it is. Right. And density, it, it, it makes it heavy. So what's the opposite of that? You can look this up. So it's a tinfoil triangle and we put a negative charge into it and we keep that negative charge into it and it goes up. It goes up and away. Are we defying gravity? or we define the electrostatic charge, right? Remember, gravity is just a theory with 96% of it made up, right? So here's something MIT is working on. This is called the silent drone. Look at this thing. No moving parts, makes no sound. All they did is change the electrostatic charge of this and it flies, okay? Imagine this taking the energy it needs out of the air and it could fly forever with no moving parts nothing to wear out, okay? This is the real technology they're hiding from. Why the lie? They're hiding technology. They're hiding, what if you had a, something the size of a roll of coins that could heat your house and power your car 
and air conditioner and everything for the rest of your life. And you never had to replace it. Okay. They're hiding technology. They're making us pay um, for, for this stuff. They're making us literally pay for the development of this and we'll never see it. Okay. We'll never see it. What do you think the whole purpose is then of human beings? Like, do you believe we're all energy? Do you believe that like, there's so many questions about Earth? Like, I question everything, why we're here, who created us, what's the purpose of us, who's telling us what to do, who's telling us what to think, who's telling us what to eat? Like, nobody on this planet really has got it figured out, and I always say this, but there's no blueprint how we should be living our try to live our best lives we all think we know but it's just difficult when there's so much information out there now it's kind of frying everybody's head but what do you think our sole purpose is david on this planet well as i said before our sole purpose as a you know divine human being is to experience this amazing physical place to experience um, our soul growth to to expand the complete mind of the creator if every point is connected and everything everyone does is information that goes back to the zero point. It's hard for a physical human to understand how connected this world is, but it, it is so amazing um, that you know even the people that are awake to this are undervaluing, underestimating what it is. Um, and then these scourge that have taken over the world um, after some sort of reset, which may have happened in the mid 1800s. Um, they know how this world works. They've decided to put us in a soul trap um, where they keep us here as slaves. They don't let us um, to uh, let us expand. Let us you know, proceed onward to wherever the next realm is. Again, this is this is the way I see it. This is this makes a lot of sense, and um, you know that that that's just the way I think it is. And many 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 other people. And there's a lot of evidence towards it. Because if you watch people, you know, there this world is in tyranny right now. And um there's there's a a lot of people that are doing really bad and a lot of people that are doing really great. And it's all the way that you think. If you live in the fear, then you're gonna not do so well. If you literally just understand what you're here to do, the world is a great thriving place. Who do you think controls the world, David? Do you think there's a certain amount of families who plant the seeds for people to see the world the way they want it to see, to the, to see it? Yeah, well, it, it's the, again, it's the royal families, it's the, the Bilderbergs, the Rothschilds, the, the you know, all the lot of names that we know and many that we don't know. It's weird how all of these powerful world leaders um, go to Antarctica, they disappear for two or three days, and then they return at South Pole Station, and then they come back. Where did they go? Where are they going? Um, I think that they're going to get their marching orders from the real leaders of this world. And do you think the real leaders are outside of Earth on these other kind of, not planets, but other places? They might just be, they might just be, you know, not far inland from Antarctica. Is there any evidence that anybody's been past Antarctica? Or anybody speaking about it? Yeah, so in, uh, if I can get my app to work right now, um, there's a book. Go into the book section. Nope. Um, if you go into the book section on my app, there's a book button right there. And there's a whole bunch of books. One of them is called The Iron Republic. The Iron Republic. And it's a story of a politician in the late 1800s out of the United States that got sick and tired of the, what was going on, sold everything, bought a big ship, got a crew, went to Antarctica, and found an opening. And he went through the opening, and then they were lost at sea for a couple of months. And then they find some land, and they found a city, and they went there. And this was in the late 1800s. And they found, he described the city. Um, it was advanced. They had flat screens and you know, vehicles that floated and all sorts of stuff lived there for years, got married, and then his wife died. And then he got distraught and he got his ship back and he came back to the United States and he wrote a bunch of articles on it. So to me, the story rings true. The evidence looks real. But even if it's not, 
they're talking about more land beyond Antarctica. And the people that were there, they're like, well, we used to live inside the ice wall because in the 1600s, but there was tyranny going on and we didn't like it. So we picked up and we left. So maybe the reason that they put us in this prison planet, you know, wrapped us around a ball. And so people don't get the idea that they can pick up and leave. When are you at your happiest, David? Especially if you're searching all the time and trying to look for answers. Like, can you still live and be happy with constantly on searching, if you know what I mean? Good question. Great question. So, you know, people say, would you rather go back into the Matrix and just believe you live on a ball? And the answer is hell no. Um, all flat earthers, we, uh, we, we are never bored, right? We're, we're never bored because there's so much information to look into. Um, let me just show you something. And I, right now I'm in Mexico, right? I'm having the greatest time of my life. And this is fascinating. And we're meeting all sorts of people. I, uh, on the app, I have the, uh, what's called the friend finder. And it shows you where all of the other app users are, right? So here's the, like the UK, look at this. These are people that are awake and aware. Okay. I've never met a blue dot I don't like. Here's the United States, right? Crazy. Look at all these people. So we're the fastest growing community in the world with the largest potential of anything because, losing my voice, <clears throat> because this is a topic that affects everybody. Where's Scotland? Here, I'll do it. I can go this UK. way. Scotland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, um, Let's go like this, Scotland. Is it in? It's in the UK. Oh, oh, it's in the UK. I'm sorry. My bad. So here is, um, we'll go back to the UK. So on the app, you can actually message people. You can send out a radius message like, hey, um, I'm having a meetup, uh, so-and-so. And then all these people show up. And I guarantee you, every single person that shows up, male or female, you have a special relationship with them, and uh, it's amazing. So again, it's everywhere, and it's um, you know, there's people that are using this for jobs, finding people to work together, finding uh, new friends. There's people that have gotten married and have kids. This is a way to find awake and aware people. Like again, I've never met a blue dot I don't like. What is the matrix to you, David? The Matrix is the prison for your mind. You know, watch the movie. It's a, pretty much a documentary telling you that this is a spiritual war. They're using our energy, right? People are like, well, how can they use our energy? I don't get it. That's because you believe you're just a physical being. The people that run this world, um, they want soul energy. And they want, to, they want to control your soul. And they can't do that without your permission. So the Matrix is a prison for your mind. And that's the globe. Right? If you believe you live on a globe, spinning out of control, lost in outer space, then uh, you literally are giving away your divinity. How do you escape the matrix? Question. Um, just with your mind, just realize that you're not on a spinning ball flying through space. That's the first step. Realize that you're a divine feature. Realize that your thoughts create your reality. Realize that nobody has control over you. Realize there are no shortages. Realize uh, extinction is a uh, myth. Um, they realize that there's nothing to be afraid of. That you know that you are protected, and that your your thoughts create your reality. That's uh, uh, to me is escaping the matrix. Um, the problem is when you escape the matrix, you're surrounded by. You realize you're surrounded by zombies, right? There's zombies everywhere. There's you know I call them NPCs. They're non-player characters. They're they're lost in this world. They don't know and they don't care. Okay. Because, you know, the, there's so many jobs in this world that make no sense, but they need us having jobs, just making enough money to get by so they can still harvest our energy and, and also, you know, use the things that we are making for them. But, you know, there's, there's things that make no sense, but they subsidize them. You know, NASA, all of the space agencies, they're just jobs programs. They're to keep people busy with nonsense. They're to control your mind, right? I, I, I have this thing, I call it the pineapple conspiracy. Um, pineapples are grown in Hawaii and they take two years to grow one pineapple per plant, 
right? But somehow they can spend two years growing them. They can harvest them. They can put a printed label on them. They can pack them in a box. They can ship them on tankers and trucks, drive them all the way across America, and then sell them at Costco for $3. Meanwhile, Costco is buying them for $1.50. I don't think that is actually possible, but they do it because money isn't real, right? If we want to break free of the matrix, you know, they just do, do it so there's millions of people that are employed pineapples because as long as you're employed you know you are under control um and there, there's millions of people people doing that I had another point but i think i lost it um so oh yeah so if we want to break free there's just two simple things that we need to do we need to get off their map get off their prison planet and expand our minds across the flat earth realm and stop using their fiat money Stop using their digital currencies and use our own digital currencies. And that's why I'm a big believer in privacy cryptocurrency, because if we go on to their central bank digital currency, we are going to be slaves forever, right? But if we have a privacy cryptocurrency that can't be, you know, um, just printed into nothingness like they do with money, and then, um, then we have something, you know, and if they control us with money, and they control us with uh, controlling our minds by making us believe we live on a ball. Where do you go for the future, David? I think there's a great future. I think that the world is waking up so fast. I think the genie is out of the bottle and they can't, can't get it back in. I think they're scrambling, trying to uh, figure out something else to make us uh, you know, uh, slaves again. I think that they're trying, and I think it's failing because too many people waking up to the nonsense that's going on in the world. So, um, you know... The, the future is definitely fluid and the, the world might split into two worlds, you know, people that are awake and aware and have split off. And then there's people that are just going to go into these, um, these, uh, you know, stack them and pack them controlled cities and just be good little slaves in there. You know, they're trying to build it in, as in Saudi Arabia, the, the line, the, uh, like literally like a 30 mile long city inside of walls and you never get to go out of it, you know, to preserve nature, you know, idea of preserving nature. That's great. But they, they don't understand that the world is severely underpopulated. Yeah. It's crazy. They say there's over 8 billion people on the planet, but I've never seen the streets so quiet. See so going, anybody that's watching, it's maybe questioning everything you're saying. What, where can they go to research or where can they find, Everything you're saying is, is facts. Like, where can they check? FlatEarthDave.com is the easiest way because if you go in the Google Play Store, there's already a knockoff one by the you know deceivers that are trying to get you to go on their app so they can feed you information. Um, if you Google Flat Earth, you're going to get all nonsense, right? Go here, get the app. Now, they, listen, the app is $3. One-time charge, you have it forever, okay? The app costs a lot of money, a lot of money to run. And uh, it's three dollars. Go read the, the reviews if you don't believe me. Um, people, people love it. And take the challenge. Watch the video every day. Right? Check out the frequently asked questions. Check out the more resources, the books, the images. Check it all out. People love this app. Right? Check out the friend finder. Find people near you. You know, hey, people go like, oh my God, there's somebody right in my town. Let's meet for coffee. Bam. Next thing you know, they're best friends. They're married. All sorts of crazy stuff is happening. Find other people, flatearthdave.com. The link is right there. If you want to book me for a show, the link is there. The contact link is there. Um, there is um, all sorts of stuff. Even on there, if you scroll down a little bit, I have, it's called the Flat Earth. If you, if you can't get the app on your phone or don't want to, just go to the Flat Earth Crash Course. There's a list of videos there. I challenge you, you can't get through five videos without realizing you don't live on a globe. And why does it matter? Why does the shape matter? The shape doesn't matter. Okay, because it's flat is not a shape. It's a description of level and horizontal. Check it out, and it will change your life, guaranteed. Because I threw my hands up to only what difference does it make? I have to go to work on Monday. I have my own business. I was doing really well. Okay, and guess what? I don't have to go to work on Monday anymore. I had no idea it would work out like this. But this world is conspiring to deliver you your every wish. The problem is people are controlled and they're living in fear, and they're thinking about horrible things, and the universe is inspiring to bring those horrible things to them. When you clean your thoughts, and you connect the source energy, and you 
focus on what life really is. And people go, well, I've tried that. I want a million dollars and I don't have a million dollars. Basically, when you do that, you're saying, I don't have a million dollars and I'll never have a million dollars. What you have to do is put your feelings, your thoughts ahead of the, of the how. The, the, the world will deliver the how. You just have to live properly, think properly, and follow natural law. You know, don't interfere in anyone. And, you know, don't hurt or steal from anybody. Don't kill anybody, of course. And um, try to help the person next to you. That's all. How would you say people clean their mind, especially with so many distractions, with social media, TV, radio, drink, drugs, money, fame? Everybody's craving something. How would you cleanse the mind, cleanse the soul to then see the world as the way you should? Yeah, you know, that's a great question because I was always after money, money, you know, we're taught, you know, go work and, you know, and save enough money so you can retire. Um, the first thing is don't save for college. College is uh, a scam. You can learn anything you want online, find out what your kids want to do, put them into action and, and let them learn the real way. College is, is complete and total nonsense. <laughs> um, so the, the, what was the exact question again? I had a good point. How does people clean their soul or clean their mind from all the distractions on this planet? Yeah, you know, and, and here's the thing. I'm distracted a lot. You know, it, it's really, it, it's really very easy to get distracted. And that's all by design. Thing is, you need to just literally, you know, have a ritual. In the morning, uh, start off with some clear thought, a prayer even, of, you know, and, and an expectation of having an excellent day. And then put some positive thoughts out there. Um, do a little meditation. Nothing crazy, you know. Just like focus, clear your head. You know, if you if you're like, I can't meditate. My mind is a monkey mind, right? Just do it for one minute a day, and that'll turn into five minutes, and that'll turn into ten minutes. And if you just meditated for ten minutes a day, that'll slow your mind down. It'll let source information come into you. The problem is they want you so monkey minded that you never connect to source, and that you just Get all of your programming from the tell lie vision programming. They want you to believe in complete and total nonsense. And that's what they're, they're feeding you complete and, and total nonsense. Right? So, you know, here's an example. This, this article just came out. Okay. Uh, they believe that the earth's core has stopped and changed directions, which could devastate life on earth. Okay. What? That's ridiculous, right? The deepest hole ever dug is less than eight miles. So if the earth, if the earth was an apple, they barely drilled through the skin and why they were drilling, they, uh, they never, uh, they were wrong on guessing what they're going to hit next using ground penetrating radar. They got, they, they, they were wrong every step of the way. Then they hit an impenetrable barrier less than eight miles down. They could never get through it. Okay, but somehow they know what the next 4,000 miles is when they couldn't guess the first eight miles. This is a meme. That's all it is. There's no science behind it. It's completely made up and it's in every textbook. Every science book has this, right? Nonsense. Davey, would you like to finish up on anything, brother? Don't believe anything I say. Take the time. Verify. This will change your life. Get the app. It's three dollars, right? Oh, full disclosure: if you want to be able to message people, you have to subscribe. It's eleven dollars a year. Simple, right? But if you don't want to do that, you can just recommend the app to other people. And if eleven people get the app, you get the subscription for free, right? There's a whole bunch of ways around it. But even if you don't get the app, go to my website. Plenty of information there. But you know, once you become a flat earther, this is indispensable because when you're talking to somebody. And you want to teach them about flat earth it's great to have this in your hand um you can show them how everything works you know on the app i didn't show you this we, we turn it on we turn on the stars the stars go around they lap the sun once a year so the sun will drift back into each zodiac throughout the year right so the stars keep track of the seasons and the year the sun keeps track of the of the um hours and the days and the moon it's lapped by the sun once every 28 days. So the moon phase and position keeps track of the weeks and the months. There used to be 13 months of 28 days. But check it out. That will change your life. Because I think we'll maybe 
jump on a live as well, maybe in a few weeks, David, and people can ask questions about any anything they want and you can maybe answer better for them. So we'll go live as well in a couple of weeks. But for coming on today, mate, and putting your side of your thoughts of the world with on this podcast, mate, fair play to you, mate. Um, I don't have all the answers to everything. You don't all have all the answers to everything. We can only speak how we see the world, how we view it. And that's what it's all about. One, one more thing. There is a dedicated team of trolls that are going to bombard your your uh, comments on the on the on YouTube, and they're going to reply to everybody. I encourage people go to their channel because they have the all of the globe roofs there. And what I mean by that is the channel is completely empty. There's nothing on them. They're just bots and trolls. So they they come after me. They're, they're amazing how fast they find my videos on all these other channels, uh, but they will be there. So just don't let them discourage you because that's their job. Their job is to ridicule and make you go, oh, I'm not looking into this anymore. I don't want to feel stupid. So but here's the thing. Don't believe me. Don't believe them. Don't believe anything. Go verify yourself. David, listen, again, thank you, brother. Stay in touch and we'll get you back on, but I wish you all the best for the future. God bless you and take care. Thanks so much. Cheers, brother.